Hi guys and girls, welcome back to Watch The Time. So today I've got in another steel dive. At this point, I think I've had um, a couple, I think, a couple in. Um, they're a brand that actually, they do keep on improving. It, it seems to be a theme with a lot of these brands coming out of China at the moment with San Martin, they're sort of leading the way. Not far behind, you've got Kronos, um, you've got Heimdalla, you've got another new company called Seaston. Steel Diver doing bits now though, I must say. When they, when they first brought out their Willard, yeah, cool watch. I wasn't overly happy with the random clicks the bezel had, but please check out my video if you've, if you've not seen it already. Um, but yeah, this is the Steel Dive Sumo. I will put the model number in front of me. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a cool watch. And the, the one thing you'll know about Steel Dive watches, if you've ever had one, is their loom is just monstrous. They don't mess about with their loom. They just lather it and lather it on. Uh, their loom could light up, light up a dark room. It's, it's phenomenal. Uh, the loom is amazing. I don't want to go too much into detail about this watch. But again, Adrian over at Somewhere in Time, thank you for letting me borrow your watch. Thank you very much, mate. It's fantastic uh, that you've sent this over for me to have a little peruse at. Um, and I will pin this channel. Please head over and give him some love, guys. He's doing some fantastic work. And again, thank you for tuning back in. And without further ado, let's get the camera turned around and get on with it. Hi, right, guys. So this is the watch. Uh, as I said in the brief intro, it's the Seiko Sumo Homage. Uh, still dive this is the 1971 it comes with an awful lot in the package this was obviously uh, supporting the watch it comes with an instruction manual uh, Adrian has upgraded always going to upgrade it to a mill clasp good upgrade uh, warranty card unsigned unfortunately as you can see I've taken two links out for it to fit my wrist uh, Adrian also had to take two out to fit his so I'd have had to take four out for it to fit my wrist and it comes with a rubber strap I've not tried it I don't tend to like the look of these rubber straps with the massive holes in them. Uh, not a bit of me, but it also comes with a couple of more spring bars and yeah, bits and pieces. So cool. He got his from Steel Dive UK. I'll leave a I'll leave a link taking you to where you can find the AliExpress, um, and I might also leave a link taking you to the where you can find it on Steel Dive UK. Depending on what's more convenient for you, use Eva really. Uh, it's all about what works better for you in terms of price and how long they take to come and all that stuff. It's all good. But let me put this to the side, guys. As I say, it's just the sort of standard sort of box you get of a lot of these steel dive watches and San Martins. Although San Martin have upgraded their um, watch box, which you'd have seen in my video. I did subsequently break the box, <laughs> unfortunately, but yeah, it is what it is. But there you go. That's This is the watch. As I said, it's the SD1971. Inside, it's running a... Seiko NH35 movement. Um, I'll show you the case back. You won't be able to see the movement given the fact obviously it's a stainless steel case back, but I just thought I'd let you see. But yeah, Seiko NH35 movement, any of those NH movements from Seiko are pretty reliable to be honest. I, I have no problem having them in my watches. The construction of this watch, aside from the bezel insert, is all 316L stainless steel. So that's the obviously the other part of the bezel crown, case back, case. Solid end links bracelet and clasp, uh, all 316L stainless steel. The case thickness of this watch is 13.8 millimeters. The case diameter going from the nine to the three is 44.6. When you go from the sort of, I don't know, 945 position, maybe all the way down to the crown, it does become 48.7. So bear that in mind. The lug width is 20 and the lug to lug tip to tip is 52.2 that does become you'll better see this quite a bit bigger it comes up to 57.4 millimeters given the fact it's got quite long male center links so yeah just just bear that in mind guys um the bezel type on this is 120 click unidirectional bezel and it's ceramic let's let you listen Yeah, no, no real problems. That lines up perfectly, as you can see. Um, yeah, nice, nice bezel. No bounce, no back play. Very cool bezel. As I said, I showed you a moment ago, the case back is screwed down and it is deep etched with the Steel Dive uh, logo on there, as well as some other writing and specs of the watch. The crown is screwed down. It is situate, situated at just almost a four o'clock position. And you're, I'll, I'll, go into, I'll show you a bit more about that as we go into the movement and stuff. The strap material 
is stainless steel also as you know uh, solid and links fitted nicely all brushed and polished on the sides which is fairly consistent with a lot of watches to be honest and the clasp also signed with steel dive uh, got a safety catch double safety pushes and yeah pressed um yeah unfortunate seems to be the way though with steel dive they do seem to sort of push out a lot of these press clasps which is a bit unfortunate but it is what it is the crystal covering that dial it looks like a, it looks like a domed sapphire crystal it distorts it's quite nice i think it's single domed and it's got plenty of ar coating on there to the point actually it looks really nice because of the blue dial and the blue ar coating offers loads of different contrasts with how the, what the sort of blue you get which i think is really cool um yeah nice i like that the water resistance of this watch is 200 meters so that would give you 20 atmospheres of water resistance and the weight will appear in the top right hand corner uh, it's in and around 184 grams give or take but let's have a look at the dial now guys in a bit more detail so what you've got you've got a raised rehout with a minute track going around the outer edge just inside that you've got applied indices everywhere except for the three o'clock where it makes way for the date window given the fact it's a Seiko NH35 movement at the 12 o'clock you've got a large baton sort of like a I don't know almost like an inverted triangle but with a tip off the end of the triangle cut off larger batons again or slightly smaller than that but other larger batons at the six and nine and circular indices everywhere else uh, as i said apart from the three o'clock position um i'll actually let me start up start. let me charge it actually because it was just i wore it and then put it in the box um put some juice and as you can see it's a hand winding movement in case you didn't know uh just below the baton at the 12 you've got steel dive in terms of in script writing at the logo uh, just printed onto the dial just above the indices at the six you've got green marine that's what they're called in this variant automatic 200m just to note in the fact that they're, they're saying it's 200 meters water resistance uh, the hands and indices are all loom filled as is the bezel and i'll bring it up now just so you can have a look once again guys uh, if you didn't know before you do now Steel Dive don't mess about with their loom. They put copious amounts of loom on their dials and hands and indices and everything else. They don't mess about. Yeah, good, very good loom. I can't complain about that. And like I say, they like the sunburst effect and everything. The sunburst, along with the different, with the blue of the dial and the AR coating, just works wonders. But as I said, if we take it out to the second position, it will hack. You put it into the first position, it will start up again. Excuse me. Yeah, the first position you could change the date we'll go with. And the neutral position, if you like, you can hand wind. Um, but yeah, the, like I say, you can't really go wrong with these movements. Um, I think they've even done a good job with the crown. Good size, and it screws in very, very nicely. No, Not difficult to, to engage with at all, which is good, especially on an automatic where there's a good chance you're going to have to sort of take the, take the crown in and out. It makes your life that bit easier. But yeah, that's the dial, guys. Um, yeah, that's, the, that's everything in terms of what you want to see. Let me just pop it on the wrist quickly. As I've said before, my wrist is just above a seven inch wrist for your reference. So I'll show you what it looks like on my wrist. So that's what it looks like on me. You would have seen the daytime shots earlier. That'll give you another perspective of what it looks like on my wrist. But that's what it looks like on me uh, inside on my under my studio lighting. But um, yeah, cool, cool watch. Um, one that wasn't really on my radar in terms of steel, steel dive. Sumo wasn't one that one that was really crying out to me uh, my friend adrian got it in and to be honest i can see why it's actually not a bad looking watch pretty cool but um yeah that would now take me on to what i think is pants and pucker about the watch and if you've ever watched before you know i always start with pants i like to go on a high with pucker so what i think is 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 pants is the end links i just think they protrude far too far they they fit nicely they're snug but i just think it's unnecessary it's already quite a big watch um male and links were just a bit unnecessary on this i think they should have gone for female and links just to help it hug the wrist a bit more if it's okay on me um not too bad but female end links would have really helped uh with a big watch what's a killer can be the lug to lug and i think male and links on this are not really doing it any favors to be honest and yeah again the clasp guys um as you can see adrian bought a mill clasp um you can get them on aliexpress three four quid um so if we if you can get them for that singular if you was to buy them bulk 
I'm sure it wouldn't cost that much. So I would prefer them to, to see those sort of clasp on this. Uh, all the signage on there, no problem. But yeah, press clasp is gnarly, to be honest. I don't really like press clasp. I know some people don't mind them, but they're not a bit of me, I've got to be honest. So just to surmise, they're the only two things for now, mate, I've got to be honest. Um, I'd go with the end links and the clasp in terms of what I think is pants. What I think is pucker, yeah, the sapphire crystal. I like the way it distorts, where it's only single dome sapphire crystal. The AR coating on this, for some it might be too much, but the blue AR coating with the blue dial, I think it's a triumph. I'm not sure it'll look the same with other colored dials, but with the blue, it looks fantastic. I do really like that. Uh, the hands and indices, I think they look really cool, a bit different. Um, it's got a bit of Willard in it, but not the color, but in terms of the two um, on, on the second hand. But yeah, it just looks a little bit different, pretty cool. The, the minute it's more like a fence post, but yeah, it looks, looks nice. I do like the proportions and everything. And the hands and indices are finished very nicely, nicely polished. The bezel, as I say, the bezel on this is really nice, easy to grab hold of. Um, nice, nice clicks, no bounce, no back play. Yeah, it does the business. I'll, I'll go back round because I know some people, if I leave it at a random place, it's going to drive them insane. And I, and I don't want to do that to my, my viewers. But um, yeah, that's that's the bezel. Bezel's very cool. The loom, as you'd have seen before, it will just light up a dark room. It is unbelievable the loom on, on this watch. And as is the case really with a lot of steel dive watches, the loom is phenomenal. The crown, as I said, in terms of how it's knurled, how it, how it screws and unscrews, the fact it's also signed doesn't hurt anything either. The case back, yeah, deep etched, um, as you saw earlier. Yeah, nice, nice bit of kit. The fit and finish, actually, I don't like the press clasp, but everything's done nicely. The, everything fits nicely. The brushing's nice, even on, a, on the case. If you can see, the way it transitions, um, I think is really, really cool. Um, the way it sort of slopes in. Yeah, nice. It's, it's done nice, the case. And the price, in terms of... You could pick this up for in and around a hundred pound, and this is a whole lot of watch for that price. Uh, not just because it weighs a bit, but the specs and stuff you get for this watch are pretty phenomenal, to be honest. And with prices creeping up, that that needs to be appreciated. So just to surmise, what I think is pucker, I go with the sapphire crystal. I go with the AR coating, the hands and indices, the bezel, the loom, the crown, the case back, the fit and finish, and the price in terms of what I think is. Pucker. And would I recommend this watch? Yes, I would. Uh, definitely. It wasn't one that I, like it was on my radar. I didn't like certain bits of it. But actually, in person, it looks a lot better. It's actually a really cool watch. And I must admit, I like Steel Dive before. But just like the other brands, Steel Dive are starting to push on and operate at a better level again and again. So, yeah, fair play. Would recommend this watch. Uh, I will leave a link, as I've said at the start, taking you to... AliExpress and also Steel Dive UK, just so you can try and get whichever one works better for your price and everything else. But guys, let me know what you think about this watch and any other watches you may want to see on the channel. And as always say, don't forget to like, like and subscribe and always watch your time. Take care guys, all the very best. <laughs>